guys, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about alcohol stoves. I happen to own the Red Camp, but you can buy this exact same model under a dozen different names easily on Amazon or anywhere else for that matter, and they are all plus and minus, or plus or minus, you know, a buck or two, pretty much all around the same price. But the problem that I tend to have since I use this stove so much is when it's cold. I mean, as you can see, it's not even super cold now. I've got 37.9 degrees, but still, that is cold enough to keep alcohol from vaporizing properly because my stove's been out here, my fuel is out here full time, so I don't take it in the house. But let me turn my light off here and show you what my issue is. What a lot of issues is. I know it's dark. There is not enough vapor to light the stove because it's cold. The alcohol is cold. Okay. Now, this is where a simple tea light is a lifesaver because I've got to get this fuel warm before it's going to ignite for me. So, all I do is flip my burner tray upside down. I'm gonna light my tea light, just like so. Now my alcohol stove's gonna go on top. Okay, now I'm gonna use my tea light essentially to warm the alcohol so that it starts to vaporize again and I will then be able to light the stove. So we're going to let this warm for a moment and I'll be right back with you guys. Alright now I'm not sure that you can even see it but what we've got going on here now that the alcohol is warming up We've got a little bit of movement in the alcohol. You can see like a boiling action, not bubbles, but just little lines in the alcohol moving around. I'm seriously doubting at this angle you can even see what I'm talking about. Let's try this. If I could get my camera to focus better. There we go. Yeah, I can see that. You should be able to. But the alcohol is warming. And this is what's going to cause it to vaporize. Alright, we'll give this a moment, guys. And I'll show you how she does. Alright. It's been probably close to around three minutes. Oh yeah, the alcohol is substantially warmer than it was. So let's see if we can get vapor, get ignition here. All right, lights out. As you can see, we are now warm enough on the alcohol that we can vaporize. And we've got flame. Now I'm gonna leave the tea light here just a moment to make sure this takes off pretty good and that it's not going to, sometimes it'll go out very quickly. It'll look like it's going to stay lit, but it doesn't. And when I'm satisfied that it is indeed going to stay burning, my tea light comes out. Now all i got to do is let the stove burn until it's good and hot, until it goes prime, and I'm good to go. stove flip back over here get our burner in place the way it should be I use a bushcraft grill over the top that way I can set any size cup on here because I like to use a glacier cup but a glacier cup does not sit really well on this thing without a bushcraft grill so I've got my grill and now I can set any size cup on top of that. And as you can see, 
We're still burning. The bushcraft grill is getting hot. You can see it heating up, starting to turn cherry red. But the long and short of it, guys, this is how you warm the alcohol in an alcohol stove so that it will vaporize for you because alcohol does burn any any temperature. Like I said, right now, I've got 39.6 degrees. There is no heat in here, as you can tell by my breath. The only heat in this entire environment inside my soft cabin here is what's coming off of my body and what's now coming off of this stove. So, just remember guys, it really pays to have a couple of tea lights along with you if you use an alcohol stove in the cold. Because this will prime your alcohol and warm it up so that it ignites for you. As you can see, we're still going. It'll take a little bit, but the stove will finally prime and it will burn nice and hot and the flame will basically quadruple in height and <laughs> it'll be all the way up here when it's finally said and done and over with. So anyways, that's just a quick tip for you guys. Sorry about the light in the face. Anyways, just a quick tip for you guys. Something that I learned kind of randomly by accident. I was reading on bushcraft forum with a lot of guys that use alcohol stoves in the cold and somebody had mentioned hey by the way you know it's hard to light an alcohol stove in really cold weather because of the vaporizing not happening so he recommended a tea light candle for this exact purpose and I gave it a try and it, it works wonderful okay so you know remember to take your tea light candles along they're great little lights anyway I also use them for flame extenders if I'm igniting a wet fire, something like that. I build my fire high with my damp materials, and I'll slip a tea light candle into there, lit. And if I have to, I'll just let that whole thing burn, but it's going to dry my fire from underneath. And when the fire finally does go up, it doesn't matter if I lose this candle, because you can buy 50-pack of them at Walmart for $2.33, okay? So they... The cost wise next to nothing, but they can really be a life sender or a lifesaver as far as a flame extender or light or a little bit of warmth or in this case warming my alcohol for my alcohol stove. As you can see the stove is starting to go prime, is burning better. And you want to give your alcohol stove a little while to get up to a good prime burn before you set a pot on it or anything on it to actually start the cooking process. But as you can see, my bushcraft grill is now good and red hot. But anyway, that's it guys. Just a little uh, tip that some of you I'm sure already knew, but I did not. Like I said, I read about it on a forum and I just wanted to pay it forward and share a little bit because it's really been a lifesaver out here like I said this is my go-to cooking method because I'm burning denatured alcohol in this thing and denatured alcohol is one of the only things that burns clean enough that you do not have to worry so much about dangers such as carbon monoxide it is still a possibility anything that puts out a flame is going to release carbon carbon monoxide but I've got adequate ventilation here and uh it's really not too much of a worry, but I wouldn't use, say, my propane isobutane mix, my Coleman Peak 1 with my isobutane propane mix. You know, I couldn't use that in here unless I had my door fully opened and really had it ventilated very well. Even then, I really probably shouldn't, but if I absolutely had to, I probably could get away with it as long as I was very careful. But anyway... Thanks a lot, guys. If you have any questions or comments, don't forget, drop those down below. I will get back to you. Um, if you like the video, please hit that thumbs up for me. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Reach over there and hit the notification bell. Select all notifications so that you are notified when I upload. Uh, questions or comments, like I said, guys, I'm a small enough channel right now. I have uh, 
low enough number of subscribers that if you ask me something or if you make a comment, I can get back to you. I answer every single comment and every single question. So, drop those down there if you got anything you want to say. Or maybe there's a tip or a trick that I don't know about or something else that you've tried or that you've done. I know that I can carry my alcohol in a small bottle and carry it on my person inside maybe my secondary layer to warm it with my body. I can also put it in something that I know is going to seal really well so I don't have any leakage. And I can then drop that into my pack or into my sleeping bag and keep it in the bag with me and also keep it warm and then I don't have to go through this to prime my stove. However, a tea light candle, like I said guys, thank you very very much for watching. Thank you for your views and your support and guys I'll get another video out as soon as I can. See you on the next one.